We're going to look at Luke chapter 9. I'm going to teach you something pretty scary. And the Bible says in the last days there shall be doctrines of devils, 1 Timothy chapter 4. The Bible says in Corinthians chapter 2, we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. Now, you know what's really interesting is that how much the Bible is ahead of Hollywood. Amen? That book is amazing. People go to movies and they look at fantasy and they go like, ooh, brilliant, ooh, brilliant director, ooh, brilliant storytelling. Let me tell you something. That book has, is older. It's thousands of years old and it already predicted all these things before Hollywood and news media caught up. Amen. No, really? Yeah, let me tell you something. That thing, I think uh, it's a famous movie, Alien or Aliens, but uh, you know the scene where I think where the alien is like comes out of the heart, you know, outside of a person. You got to realize this: that could be more literal than you think. And you might go, "What? You're serious?" Well, let's first look at this, okay? If you know your Bible, you do know this: the aliens are connected either to sons of God or offsprings. More of the people lean toward offsprings of the sons of God. We're going to put demons, and then we're going to put uh, mutants right here. The mutants will be the offspring of them. What you're going to notice is that demons throughout the Bible is synonymous quite often with mutants. You're going to see that quite often a lot, which is interesting. But let's just do that. Let's just put these three people, uh, three different categories, and then we'll put de uh, demons possibly synonymous with mutants. So you got to realize this is that, yes, there is a thing in the Bible, which you have to be careful as a spiritual Christian, is that when you allow sin and sa Satan and the devils to tempt your life, and I'm not going to give a teaching on that. I gave a teaching on that on theory on the origin of demons or devils. And I also gave a teaching about demon possession. You know how demon possession starts, right? It always starts with sin, heeding to temptation from sin from the devil. And you got to realize this, the more you yield into that, the more the devil will have control inside of you and inhabit inside you. And not only that, the devil will not only inhabit inside you, but it can actually even turn. It's very possible, it's possible, it can be more physical than you think. You might say, I don't think so. No, it's possibly very true. Because look at this example. This was pretty close to the alien movie, you can say. Look at this demon-possessed person. When he was cast out of the body. You know how he was like cast out of the body? Look at verse 39. And lo, a spirit taketh him, and he suddenly crieth out. There's a demon. And it what? Teareth him that he what? Foameth again. And bruising him hardly departeth from him. And I besought thy disciples to cast him out, and they could not. Jesus answering said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? Look at verse 42. And as he was yet a common, the devil threw him down, and what? Tear him. And Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit. But not only that, he had to heal the child and delivered him again to his father. In fact, uh, if we look at a different passage, there's Mark 9 and Matthew 17, but when you look at Mark 9 and Matthew 17, which talks about the same story, they thought he was dead after the devil tore him. You got to realize that spiritual being can take more of a physical thing where it gets even more dangerous. You know how physical they can get? They can get so physical where it can even affect your physical body. What happened at Mark chapter 5 and chapter 6? Look at right there. Go over there in that passage. That spiritual thing can become more and more into a physical thing where it's dangerous. We're going to look at Mark chapter 5. We're going to look at verse 8. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. So see this demon, this devil is inside this man. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, My name is Legion, for we are many. That's thousands, thousands inside that person. But you're going to find out right here. 
Uh, verse 12, And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may notice, enter into them. There is such a thing as some weird demons, monsters, going inside a person. But look how it affects him physically now. Look at verse 3, Who had his dwelling among the what? Tombs. And no man could bind him, no, not with chains. That's crazy. Not even chains could bind him. The demons had such an effect on him spiritually that it even started to affect his physical body where he can tear the chains open. Verse 4, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and notice cutting himself with stones. That is scary stuff right there. So when demons inhabit inside you, when they inhabit inside you, it always starts out what? It starts out with you spiritually, but then it can turn into something physical eventually. You know why you're yielding more and more to demons? A saved Christian, you got to realize this, a saved Christian can have this happening to them. No, look at 1 Corinthians 5. 1 Corinthians 5. Oh, why should I go to church? Why should I quit that sin? Oh, you better. I would, you, I'd freak out if I were you. All right, look at 1 Corinthians 5. You don't want this happening to you. You know what happened? You know why Satan could do that with your body? I'll tell you why. Can he do that... Let me ask you this question. Does he own your soul? No. But isn't your body still wicked? Mm -hmm. Paul even said, oh, wretched man, I am, present tense. I am carnal, present tense, sold under sin. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? If this body is still capable of sin and wickedness, and if you all agree with that, Satan can inhabit and use something wicked, the flesh. The spirit may be saved, but not your body. Oh, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Well, you know, you don't believe what Paul said. Look at verse 5, second, 1 Corinthians 5, 5. To deliver such an one, but who is this person? He's actually a saved person. Because look at verse 11. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a what? Brother, brother be a what? Fornicator. This brother is a fornicator because look at 1 Corinthians 5.1. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. There is this particular brother that committed such fornication in the church. And what did Paul say about him? Verse 5, to deliver such an one unto who? For what? The destruction of the flesh. However way the devil wants to destroy your flesh, he will do it. He will make you... That's why it, does ha it can even affect you physically if you're not careful. It can affect you so much spiritually, they'll affect you physically. Th where you do crazy things, where you can tear chains in half, cut yourself with stones, and even your body tearing itself apart. But look at the next part. That the spirit may be what? Saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. See? His spiritual nature is saved. He's a saved Christian. And yet this can happen to a saved Christian because of his body. That should scare you. Oh, it'll never happen to me, Pastor. Don't. Don't do it, man. The devil, devil's listening. He seeketh his prey as a roaring lion. And boy, something, sometime it will affect your body. And then one day we'll probably see you rolling on the ground and then some, something might come out of your body like it'll tear itself apart. Oh, he's not going to come out of the heart. Where did the movies get that? Oh, look at Acts. Look at Acts. It starts from the heart. Didn't you know that? It starts from the heart. Look at the book of Acts. You have not been reading your Bible. Look at Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Look at verse 3. Look at verse 3 now. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath what? Satan. Filled thine what? Oh, Satan filled thine heart to lie and to the, uh, to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land. 
starts right here. That's why the Bible says, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. If you're not meditating on that word, the devil will put all kinds of junk in your heart. And don't act like a tree full of owls. You know what I'm talking about. you got a bunch of that junk in your heart. That's why you had to repent and get right at Sunday preaching, haven't you? Amen. And if you're not careful, you don't clean out that heart. The devil's going to fill up so much more with that wickedness. Eventually, he can even possess your body yep. and even affect you physically. Well, that ain't going to happen to me. Think about Judas Iscariot, a disciple of Jesus, and he was a faithful member that did not leave that church. What happened? The Bible says Satan entered into Judas Iscariot, and it even affected him physically. No, it didn't, preacher. Yes, it did. You know why? He's called the son of perdition. He's going to be the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. This spiritual thing becomes a physical thing eventually. Don't play with fire, folks. Don't play with fire. And you know what? Look at Genesis 6. Genesis chapter 6. I believe that something like this have happened back then. It has happened before. Literally a monster coming out of, of the body and the person died. You might say, well, I don't think so. No, I believe so because of Genesis 6. I believe that really happened. Because look at Genesis chapter 6. We see that in the Bible with demon possession. It can, when the demon leaves, it tears a person from the inside. But not only that, this one makes sense with Genesis 6. Look at this. The devils mingled with humans. And they gave birth to such mutants. Genesis chapter 6. We will read verse 2. That the sons of God, see that? Saw the daughters of men, that they were fair. And they took them, notice, wives of all which they chose. Now look what happened through this intermingling. Verse 4. There were what? Giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, notice, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, when there was a sexual transaction of the fallen angels with humans, and they what? Bear children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. How did human women give birth to giants? Mm -hmm. See? Unless what? It can tear itself apart. It would make a lot of sense. It would make a lot of sense. It is very possible. I will put this as a possibility. I'm not saying this is doctrine, so don't get panicked. But it is very possible because when you give birth to such strange mutant, especially giants, you got to realize these were giants, folks. Did you read in your Bible how tall those giants were? How do you give birth to such things unless the body tears itself apart? This is messed up stuff. And guess what? It's going to happen in the future. Look at Daniel 2. Daniel 2. Two famous passages you will hear your, pa uh, your pastor quote quite often. Daniel 2 and Genesis 6. So all of you know this passage, but we're going to show this to the people online who don't know. I'll just do it very quickly. Verse 41. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. Who is the iron? Who is the clay? Verse 42, and as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, whoever iron is, whoever clay is, they, whoever they is, shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Notice we see the one category covered here. Seed of men, but we don't know who the they are. So we know that which part of iron, which part of clay is. Humans were born out of the dust of the earth, clay. So there we go with the humans. But who is this iron? Who is the they? It's not humans. Why? Because it says they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. There's your humans. Humans already taken. Well, who are those other beings then? In the last days, who will mingle? Genesis 6 matched it. Not only that, Revelation 12 matched it as well. We're not going to turn over there. Revelation 12, those sons of God, God come down upon the earth. This is going to happen in the future. What's going to happen in the future is that humans, it's not a movie, it's real. Humans will give birth 
two aliens and you thought that that was just a movie and that was something fascinating that the director came up with the bible was way ahead Amen. of you something a demon inhabiting some monster inhabiting in the heart and where it tears itself out of the body the bible showed you all that stuff already that's why you should stay away from sin good advice